I've got mind reading capabilities. <laughs> hey, uh, here's a new word for you. It's uh, C U R S I T O R. And the definition, an officer of the Court of Chancery whose business is to make out original writs. It's almost like curator, but it's cursor, uh, cursor, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But the definition, an officer in the Court of Chancery whose business is to make out original writs. Uh-huh. I thought I'd, uh, I, I was going to... Uh, uh, I was looking for your uh, <clears throat> Skype uh, so I can dump that in there so you can look at it, uh, and yeah. that's why I was thinking about you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so either way, I mean, you can use that word or basically just uh, stick with chief uh, uh, clerk of the equity court, okay? Uh, chief and clerk. See, we're, we, we want to be the chief, okay? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so that's why using a chief judge and chief uh, uh, clerk, and then a clerk is uh, one of the highest uh, officers out here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who is the chief civil constitutional banker of America? Uh, well, didn't you say that was in Philadelphia? Well, at one time he was. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, wouldn't that be the de jure uh, U.S. Treasury? Uh, I'm not sure. Postmaster General. Well, we yeah okay he, so he is he is the he is the civil uh, constitutional banker of America. Huh. Okay. Okay. See, he is over the uh, banking system, the post banking system, and then he's now also over the postal banking system. Yeah. Uh, and your uh, entity is a postal banker. Got it. And okay. that's what you need to do. Is we're going to we're going to this. Uh, to the Postmaster General and his uh, Chief Civil uh, Constitutional or Office of Chief Civil Constitutional Banker. Okay. And where did you find this information? Where where did you find that uh, information? Well, basically, it just all fits. Okay. Mm. Uh, the Postmaster General was not a cabinet position. Okay. It was not under the president, where all the others are. Under the president, now the only he became a cabinet position under the president after uh, the uh, setting up the postal system in the country under 1887, setting up the postal banking system in America. Okay, all right. Then he became a cabinet position there, but. On the de jure side, he is still not under the president. So he works a little bit kind of like a sovereign, like the Secretary of State's office is now, is what you're saying. Well, he's got dual hats. All of these offices have dual hats. They've yeah. got a civil hat, and then they've got a a uh, counterfeit hat. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we elicit and how do we get them to act on our behalf? Uh, was this stimulated because of the, the my conversation with you yesterday about the judicial system within the uh, Postmaster well, General? Well, it was uh, about the postal inspector, about the mailbox. Okay. The PMB, the pay, private mail bank. Okay, see, that's what in uh, the 1860s they set up the safety deposit uh, one of the statutes at large address safety deposit boxes, okay? Well, the safety deposit box that they were really talking about was the mailboxes for the people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, they could set up private uh, mailboxes in the post office, within the post office system, or uh, later on 
they moved the uh, boxes out to uh, the post at your uh, local place and gave you rural delivery. Is the postmaster that general is still classified as a safety deposit box, and that's why the inspector general has authority over uh, the protection of those safety deposit boxes. Oh. Uh, yeah, postal inspector general. Yeah. Well, is the postmaster the same as the post? I mean, the uh, the postal inspector are they one and the same, or are they two different entities? No, they're different entities. Okay. The postmaster in, in in the local area. He has responsibility for the office. Yeah. Uh, he is a local banker. Okay. Uh -huh. Now the postal inspector, he is the enforcement agent out here. Got it. And see, uh, anything that involves the mail, the postal inspector has jurisdiction, even over the Secret Service, the FBI, all of those other agencies. Yeah, because U.S. Marshals. Yeah, because didn't you say once before, and do you still agree with it, that anything that that is a transfer or a conveyance of any substance, such as currency or cases or securities, or all fall under the postmaster uh, uh, or the inspector? Well, they fall under banking law, okay? And see, we're a banker. That's why they haven't done anything to me about using my bills of exchange or anything. But I didn't address myself as this was coming from my bank. I tried to in several things, but there again, I was sending it to the wrong place. We need to send it in to the civil office against our account. But now we go in and we do a, a writ of habeas corpus banker assistant and assistance and conspiracy to the Postmaster General. Would we be identifying the distinct difference between the civil side to the counterfeit side as part of our uh, expression here? Well, it's in there, okay. We're, we're calling for the counterfeit banker yep. to be brought forward. Ah, oh, that's... Okay, uh, that's got the it. habeas corpus. That's, okay, now I see what you're talking about. Okay, all right. Yeah. And uh, we have, uh, that says he is the banker over both the, the dead and the living accounts out there. He is now obligated, and we're going to write to the bank president. And I talked to one girl, and she said, yeah, I work for banks uh, out here. And you always have to go uh, to the president of the bank to get anything authorized. Yeah. Same thing with the OIDs, too. Yeah, and... Uh, they will get processed through the IRS because the IRS, there again, everything in the Treasury works through the Postmaster General. Because it is the... It's, the it, yeah. it, 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 it's a little bit like the transmitting utility is what you're saying. They're the authorized yeah. transmitting utility. Yeah, that yeah. Postmaster General is the one that controls all the equity until we come forward and claim our equity into our private bank. All right. Um, one thing I wanted to share with you is I had a chance to talk to a gentleman up in Washington. Did I tell you about that last night, that he freed no. himself? Uh, he had a 12-year sentence that he was facing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did tell me about yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I haven't gone through the document yet, but I've had a couple of the people that I passed it to that are working on the equitable stuff, and they said that they're impressed, and that's what exactly got him expunged. But I didn't think that we need to terminate or revoke the, the uh, Social Security account. I think what we need to do is uh, do an executor's letter and send it to the Social Security. No, 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 no. We do a court ruling, court and ruling. we terminate and liquidate that Social Security account. We're going to move that completely out. Uh -huh. We're going to roll all of our funds over into our 98 series number okay. account. All right. And then uh, we will either leave it set there in uh, the depository, okay, the Treasury depository, or we will take it completely out. All right. Um, so what is your thinking on the 98 series? Should we open up a bank account, or, or how, what angle no, are we going to do? The no, you can leave it the way it is, okay? See, 
But the 98 number, okay, that's your transmitting utility number. I got it. Okay. Okay. The bank number is your, uh, the bank routing number is your number down at uh, your mailbox. Okay. And so when we get into the private bank scenario, get all of our assets out of the uh, pub public postal bank banker's pocket, we move it over into our private banker's uh, bank, then we will utilize the our uh, post office PMB number and as our bank routing number, and then our account number will be our 98 series number, our routing number, or transmitting utility number, yeah. transmitting account number, whatever. Would that have to be necessarily reflected to the IRS, too, as to a no, 3520? No. No, no. Okay. Why would you need to put it to them? Okay. We will basically uh, through the treasury, through the post office. But there again, if it's going through the post office, you owe no taxes. Uh, how's that work? Duty free. Well, have you ever gone into the post office and bought any stamps? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been charged sales tax or anything? Oh, I see the place you're coming from. All right. So yeah, you're saying it's no taxes <coughs> on is your lawful money. They can't tax it. They can only tax the dead. So right. therefore, we don't need any more interfacing with the IRS. Except yeah. we will send out 1099 uh, A's or whatever, or OIDs. Or, 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 1099 A's when we do a transmitting, and somehow or other we basically make a payment. We have to do something to address that we have given this money into the public world. So that they now are going to be taxed upon it if need be. I'm trying to imagine how they that... Huh? I, I, I says I'm trying to imagine how that would work. Uh, so you actually become the creditor and the executor is the creditor and you're issuing out uh, funds. We become the banker. We so, become the banker. Okay. I see. Yeah. Basically, we control the funds in the bank. <clears throat> yeah, oh, I see. Okay, now you put it together. All right. So, in other words, you're the creditor issuing out debt uh, to the debtor. Yeah. 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 So that's just, uh, you know, you'll want to use the term banker from now on, okay? Yeah, banker. Uh, because uh, you have the bank, yeah. okay? I don't know whether you ever played the game on Backrack or not. No. Okay, the best have. game out in Vegas uh, with, for odds is the game called Backrack. And it has a player and a banker. And the banker has the best odds out there in Vegas. I like this because Bar. the uh, I, I just saw the other day some information that backs this 100% that being the private banker actually functions as a creditor and instead of being the debtor, you make the other party the opposing party, whoever receives the funds, the debtor, now he's subject to the tax. That is probably the, the proper way that it was supposed to be set up in 1933, don't you think? This is, isn't this? Well, it was not. They weren't setting it up that way in 1933. They were going after to get access to our accounts because nobody in this country really knew that they were a private banker. Okay? They had, at that point in time, they had the post office uh, set up. And uh, they had general delivery, okay? So they could have put in a uh, request in, uh, <laughs> processed it through the Treasury Department or through the post office uh, to claim some of those funds. But it still had to be processed through by a tribunal court unless you came in with your own private court of equity. And see, we're coming in with our own private court of equity, and then we have two, and that's why when I sign as the judge, 
I put both my right and left index fingers on there, showing that he is basically by two. So it's a tribunal ruling of two. Well, it seems that uh, this stuff is taking uh, the equitable group and the uh, the two Patrick groups that uh, are working on this stuff all seem to be uh, in agreement with this. Uh, so, yeah, I I would say that the private banking is part of the duties of the executor. Oh, there you are. Uh, oh. It's the duties of you because you were banked upon the land. So you were a banker from your birthing. You weren't born as an executor, you were born as a banker, because you were banked upon the land. And then a female was supposed to be a shore of the land, and the shores support the banks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they shore up the household. Yeah. And see, the banker was supposed to claim the shore's assets. It's almost a sexual. sexual uh, it's almost a sexual thought, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't all about sex. It was mostly about money. <laughs> That's what a marriage is: is a merger of the shore and the bank. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that funny? Because uh, we were just talking about the uh, vital statistic this morning as one of the places to change your status and classification. Because they're insti- they, they, they hold and maintain institutions, so by the classification and the status change at that level is important to take note of. Yeah. Where do you go to get your passport? They will issue you a passport. That was one of the things that came up. Uh, they issue you a long-form and a short-form passport, and apparently uh, one of them is a diplomatic form of a passport for oh, the executive. Where do you go to get your passport? Now, um, well, I, I'm sure you got, you've got an answer in mind. It'll probably be the first one to make the a wrong. post office. <clears throat> they issue passports? They process the application for the passport. Yeah. They take your pictures and everything else. There oh, the that's right. Office. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking a little bit different than that. Uh, yeah, see, we've been going in after the wrong passport in there. We need to go in after the private American international passport as a private banker. We've never asked for that. But the passports, basically, all the post offices, where would you want to go to have your bank uh, to be recognized as a banker? To the banking system, the all post right. office. So they have a different form, or is it still the same form? I imagine there is a private form there somewhere. But when we get a hold of the Postmaster General, we will also address that in uh, the order to him. Okay. To supply our private American international uh, banking passport. Thank you. You well, brought up two things, yeah. okay, in my discussion with you. Yeah. Last night about the postal inspector, and that turned me on to the postmaster again. Uh -huh. I was already leaning that way. Yeah. But the more I talked about it, the more I saw, hey, he is the banker. He is the post banker of America, the civil postmaster. Yeah. And then uh, right now, in talking to you about this passport, yeah, now I need to go back up and change my court document to address the fact that that uh, our postmaster is now to issue us our private American uh, international banking passport. Okay, so let me just run one more thing up, up past you. On the other okay. calls, uh, the equitable group that's not dealing directly with uh, all of the, they're dealing with a lot of different information, they've already confirmed that you can get a passport through vital statistics once you change your class and status. Does that help you in any capacity? Well, uh, it might go that way, but uh, I don't know what.
what uh, they're getting there. But uh, well, they're talking about I the ex they're, they're talking about the executor letter, and we've we found out that we can actually. Uh, change the course of our status in class. We've got the the particular uh, uh, articles to have that happen, and that the DOJ and the Bureau of Public Debt, once you give them the acknowledgement that you are the executor, is that they give you a medallion stamp st uh, uh, paperwork as to give you the authority as to go back into the state. And one of the things that was brought up in the call this morning is vital statistics is one of the three uh, Jaguar up in uh, Canada says the Supreme Court has won. We discovered this morning vital statistic and the Secretary of State all have to get those status correction uh, paperwork in the state as for them to adjust their records. So that's what we came up with this morning. And vital statistics was reported uh, to have a long form for passports and a short form, and that you're required to walk in once you do your classification and status um, alterations. They require you to come in uh, as the executor and sign out, and apparently the, the paperwork is in the nature of a banker, but it's in the nature of an estate executor of where it implies that you're a ambassador or a diplomat on some level. So when you're talking about getting one at the post office, it's almost identical to the conversation we had this morning about altering the class and status at the uh, at the uh, vital statistics. Almost well, identical yeah, conversation. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll agree with that. But I think that that is a subordinate passport. Okay. You get the one from the postmaster general, that passport as a private international banker Okay, issued and out of the post office. Now you have the high one. You have the king passport. So, um, what the passports that are offered by the Secretary of State are those inferior to the post? Those master? are inferior to uh, the banker one. Okay, all right. So you would be getting a. Uh, you'd be getting like one for your clerk of the court or one for your bailiff of the court, whatever. Uh -huh. One of your ambassadors of the court, but not the head banker one. Okay. You want the head banker one. You want to be, and I got two abbreviations for you. Yeah. AMF and IMF. Okay. You know what the abbreviations stand for? Well, IMF is not the um, I, um, International Monetary Funds, and I, uh, I, A uh, uh, M F would be American Monetary Funds. Well, I like this one better: American Motherfucker and International <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> and, and, and see, that's what they, those guys are in their commercial system. They're either the American motherfucker or the international motherfucker. Yeah. Fucking us over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, going back to the, uh, you know, the uh, filing for a, uh, a passport, uh, were you going to, like, go down there and check on it tomorrow, or you want me to do a little research? No, I'm going to put I'm going to put it in my court order and to my writ into uh, the postmaster general that uh, he is to supply uh, the American International uh, Banker passport for me. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, Let's put it in our court record and send it to him. What, do uh, you feel like you're going to get a response uh, fairly soon to, to confirm it? I think it? that when this one goes in, yeah. and it goes in under, as a court order coming from us in this regards, uh, and this is my... I had to sit around my coffee on my kitchen table there this morning and basically hold my court, and I ruled uh, in favor of all this. And uh, so we go after them in that capacity. When you say writ, are you saying the habeas, or are you talking about a different writ? Yeah, the, yeah, the writ of habeas corpus okay. banker assistance and uh, conspiracy. See, it's twofold. We need the assistance of the civil banker to bring this about, and then we're also claiming the conspiracy of uh, 
uh, process and see they're holding our uh, uh, bankrupt banker in uh, illegal uh, incarceration there at the penitentiary. Yeah. It's a little bit like if you remember when we were listening to what uh, Christian Walters was saying is that he had a dream that uh, our assets were like imprisoned and that he was looking as to have that be free. It's a little similar when he made, you remember when he used to make those comments? Yeah, and yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're doing a habeas corpus to get out from underneath the counterfeit system that basically is treason upon the people, because and it's an underground regulation, because they never got our balloted uh, consent as to be running this bankruptcy and this counterfeit over the top of our de jure form of government. Now, they're using counterfeit instruments, banking instruments out here. They're not de jure banking instruments. They're counterfeit banking instruments. And then they're also operating in a conspiracy to defraud us, the American banker. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. It's 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 clean. You know, you know everything yeah. that we talked about today is pretty clean. It pulled uh, it pulled everything that uh, basically I've been working on for about the last four years together into uh, uh, several simple little documents. And basically, this court case is just a two-page document. And uh, uh, going back to the postmaster general and. Uh, I sent all the other ones out, but I think this one in itself mm -hmm. is the one that will really open the door. Because see, the treasurer and all those other people, mm -hmm. they work under the banker. Yes. Yeah. So basically, the banker, until we reach the banker, they ain't going to do anything. Yes, and I think that that is part of the key. Uh, one of the groups that I don't hear anything from anymore uh, goes back a couple, three or four years ago. They actually found their way through becoming an authorized banker and were completely out of the system. And that's the reason why I never heard from them again is they got it right. But they did it with the Federal Reserve Bank. Oh, no, they can't do it with the Federal Reserve Bank. They well, they did. Right. Well, they did, and they got out of the system. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Okay, if they dealt with the Federal Reserve Bank, uh -huh. they're still in. They have like their black cards and stuff like that. That, uh, uh, oh, what the hell is that? Uh, uh, Legacy Tony yeah. Fisher King and all those guys were trying oh, yeah. to do uh -huh. back five, six years ago. Yeah, and that was about the same time that they got out of the system. Yeah, well, they think they got out of the system, and uh, basically, you just may never have heard of them because they're probably in some other. Incarcerated system. <laughs> 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 okay. Now, they probably took a uh, black ops trip. Well, things. Is, you're right. Things are coming together. I uh, and I appreciate you talking with me about this. Uh, I think it's good to brainstorm this stuff uh, and to stay on on course with this. Um, but I think that this one is a clean one. I, it looks clean to me. I think the habeas yeah. corpus could be utilized, and because it's in the nature of common law and uh, also in Constitution, it, it lends to the equitable side rather than statutory. So it's right. a. It, and it, see, then uh, we have total control over equity, and the bank and the judges out here have told us all this. We just didn't hear what they were telling us. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason to ever be in the judicial system, and that's what I've been telling everybody. I think everybody is is so way off. Uh, no wonder uh, no one's getting any results because they want to involve themselves with the judicial. It's not with the judicial for our relief and remedy. It's it's else, elsewhere. You know, it's not with the judicial. Right. Well, see, we we need to stand by our private laws first, then we will go and utilize the civil laws because. Uh, over them in a civil court action, okay? Yeah. If need be. But, All right. Uh, we need to have, uh, we stand in uh, common law or basically uh, natural law. Yeah. Uh, not natural, but uh, native law, whatever. Uh, law of nature, okay? How about unalienable nature? How about unalienable law? Oh, that, that is the laws of nature, yeah. okay? Yeah. yeah they no, can't I, be aligned. Yeah, okay? it can't be aligned, yeah. 
And uh, so then we uh, do our equity uh, uh, court ruling, and then if uh, these guys do not comply with us, that I think uh, as soon as we get to the postmaster general and basically put our court document and everything into him and uh, the passport request and everything, I think we've got it all right there. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm i tending to, to, to go along with what you're saying uh, because it's, it's really gelling with what I have been looking at this last week. Uh, the, the whole idea is to get back to the civil servant. The laws that govern civil servant is the angle that you have to come in on. Uh, even if you're putting an order forth uh, of, of a civil servant, is that that was your guaranteed contract with them as to them to have an office, for them to be functioning in a corporate manner, uh, which came in later after our consent to, to have a government, means that that is a dual office and that they're functioning and forcing you without your knowledge into that uh, counterfeit uh, government uh, rules, statutes, and regulations. And what you're saying now is, is confirming what I believe is to get back to grassroots, go right back to the civil servant contract and force them under contract, uh, force them under contract as to adhere to your orders. Yeah. And see, we're the superior that stands over them. We're the, we're the real government of America. Exactly. Right? Yep. And they're the civil government, but we're the uh, real government of America. And then you have this counterfeit government or this criminal government of yeah. America. Now, is there another word that you came up with other than counterfeit? Did you, did you stumble off of any other words that would uh, bring uh, it home? Criminal, basically. See, criminal, uh, uh, everything out here, when I went to the U.S. Marshals website, uh, all their actions are uh, that they serve papers and everything on is either civil action or a criminal action. On their website. Okay, now I want to. Ninety percent of their stuff uh -huh. that they're really dealing with is criminal. Yeah. Um, I wanted to offer you something that is going to uh, support everything you're talking about. Uh, this was a report that was put out by the investigation of the U.S. Marshal's Office of the state of the banking system, and it's an eye opener. And this here will prove and show to the rest of the world what you're talking about when you say counterfeit government or banking system. Uh, do you want me to send that over to you? Yeah, send that over too. Because okay, it's the I facts and conclusions. I won't get it until tomorrow. Yeah, it's the facts but, and conclusions uh, of the U.S. Marshal's Office in their investigation on the banking problem. And then see, all this fits in with what Iceland did, what several of these other countries are doing out here. And Ireland was one of the last ones here just recently that I heard they were going after these counterfeit bankers and the government counterfeiters. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, let me go. Um, i gotta, okay. I got to scoot on. Can I put this uh, recording over at the Equity Group? Yeah. Okay. And uh, yep. tell them about the call tonight at 7, 7 o'clock uh, Central Time. Yeah, I think a lot of people... Time. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be watching the Super Bowl tonight, but, um, yeah, I'm glad I had this talk with you because... I'll tell them they can't make any money on the Super Bowl, <laughs> but they can make money here. <laughs> All right, Pat, I'll talk to you after a while. Okay, uh -huh, talk bye -bye. to you later. Uh -huh. okay.